God bless you all this morning. It is a, such a joy. And I feel so humbled that God has let me stand here this morning. And I so grateful with Pastor Rex, who is not here, but he trusts in God and let me stay here today. Welcome to all of you. And I know God is going to speak to you as he has speak to me through this preparation. I want to invite you to open your Bible. We have been preaching in a series that Pastor Rex prepared for us like a guy. In today's message, it's not an easy thing to do. The message for today is love one another like Jesus loves us. I want to invite you to look at the Gospel of John, chapter 13. And I want to anticipate, I appreciate each of you that you guys going to do the effort to understand me. It's my first time preaching in English. Oh. Praise, the Praise the Lord. So the word of God is say, if you have it in your Bible or on your app, dear children, I will be with you only a little longer. And as I told the Jews, so now I'm giving you a new commitment. Love each other. Yes. As I have loved you, so you should love each other. It's a great message. And this opportunity, Jesus is talking to his disciples, those who walked with him for three years, knowing that the time it was coming. And you know, when you can imagine when someone, when a parent or relative is about to go home with Jesus, um, they does the best effort to pass the wisdom. Jesus was giving them at this time to his disciples, the best mentorship, the teaching, giving them a lot of those gold nuggets that we need to have him. Besides that, Jesus was revealing what is going to happen soon, like when Judas it was about to betray him. And he was going to sell him for just story silver coins. Can you imagine one of his disciples doing that? Also, he was about to reveal that Peter, one of his most active disciples, that guy who was very active to do things, I imagine that when he called to do something, he was the first one in line. But it was so sad because Jesus told him on that night that before the cross of cross, he will deny three times. It was so sad. So, after Jesus washed her, his disciples' feet,
they took the dinner. And they did have a long, long, long conversation. And we can see in the verses we just read it. The old children, I can imagine him sitting down. I know you guys have probably uh, some of you a beautiful picture on the wall with the supper. It's a beautiful picture. But it wasn't that way. They didn't have a table like in the picture is. They sat down on the floor. It was very humble. But you can keep that picture just to remind you that supper. Jesus was telling them, Dear children, I will be with you just a little longer. Time was short. And as I told the Jews, I am giving you a new commandment. Love each other. Let's say it together. Just as I have loved you, you should love each other. Just as he loves us, he wants us to love each other. So, this is not an option. This is not if I can, if I want. Or if I feel, it's a commitment. But how Jesus loves us. Leviticus 19, 18, and the Old Testament, we have that commitment. It says, do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against a fellow Israelite. But love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. So that wasn't new. For the Jews, they knew that. This command was given for the Moses to pass it on to the Israelites. But for the Jews, this, this was not a new commandment. What was new, what Jesus said, as, just as I have loved you, you should love each other. That was the new commandment. So now, how Jesus loves us. The Bible says that he came down to this earth. He left her throne of glory. Not just to tell us nice words. Not to smile to us. Not to pat on our shoulders. No, he didn't come for that. It is nothing wrong with it. We can do that. We can smile, we can say good and nice words, we can pat on our friend, on our neighbor, on our brothers and sisters. There's nothing wrong with that. But Jesus demonstrates his love to those who nobody cares, to those who, who were isolated. To those who were abandoned, belittled, sick, sinners like Zacchaeus, the Samaritan, and all those in need, for each of them, he not just saw them. He did something for them. He took an action and laid it on. As you know, he died for them and for us. During his three years of ministry, for those isolated, he took away their leprosy and get them free. 
for those who were abandoned, he rescued them. For those who were bleed, the bleeding woman, by healing her, he gave her a significant new life. For those who were sick, he healed and restored them. To all sinners, including you and me, he saw. Remember Sakio? He saw him. He thought he was, nobody see him, but he saw him. Talk to him. Forgive him and give him an opportunity. You know, Sakio, he repented. He repented and gave back to the people who he has stolen before. What an impact. Because that's what Jesus wants us to understand, that when we have an encounter with him, it has to be something changed on our life. We cannot continue in the same way. Because he, what he does is noticeable. The Samaritan who was ignored, rejected, refused, mistreated, dismissed, the Bible say that Jesus spoke to her with truth and love. That love and truth touched her heart. Jesus met her in the midst of her situation. And because he spoke with truth, he went straight to the point. So she could recognize her condition. And she was convinced that Jesus was the Messiah. She not even took her water jar back with her. She ran, she flashed, she, she ran to share the love of Jesus to her neighborhood. She didn't keep it just with her. We are calling to love that with that kind of love, to speak with through. Some people just know what they know. Someone need to tell them the truth with love. We need to tell them that it's only one through. It's Jesus. And the love that Jesus has shown us is not based on feelings. Jesus never say, I do not feel it. I want to heal that man. Or today I not have the feeling to go to the um, little uh, village, Galilee. Or today I feel so tired, so I don't want to go across to Galilee to get those people free. Oh, he could say, I do not feeling to go to the cross. But thanks God for the love of Jesus. It was not by feeling otherwise he wouldn't die for us. But thank you, Jesus, for your love. So now we come to the church, not because you, we feel like we want to come. Sometimes you're tired. And you can. Sometimes you're sick and you can. I saw people around here with respiration problems and they're here. And I praise God for them. They are such a good example for me. We came to the church because we are grateful. 
we love each other because he loved us first. Jesus loved us first. So we testify not because we feel like to. We testify because God has done so great things in your life, in our life. God has done great things. How we can not testify? As the Samaritan, we want to, we want others to be loved like he loves us. She went to share the gospel because she, she feel loved. So she want others to be loved the same, to feel the same, to experience the same love she was experienced at that moment. I don't know, but I think as a person who has been free from cancer or any terrible disease, And if that person sees someone suffering from something similar, it most likely she want to or he wants to share what or how he got free from that. That kind of love. It will be as kind of selfish if we don't share what God has done on our life. So, it is too easy to love others when they love us. But Matthew 5, 44, it say, But I say, Love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. It's not something easy to pray, to love for those who done terrible things to us. It's easy to love the people who we like, the people who we feel good with them, you know, when we hug them. It feels so good, isn't it? That is too easy, I would say, a piece of cake. To love who love me. But Jesus is telling us today, not only we got to love people who we like, but we have to even love our enemies and pray for them and love them as Jesus loves us. you know how Jesus loved his enemies? On the cross, while he was suffering, he prayed and he said, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. And honestly, there are some people that they don't know what they're doing. They do a lot of things without knowing that they are doing wrong. They just do what they have been seeing for generations. And it's sad because sometimes they do it with devotion, sometimes better than Christians. Believing that they're doing the right thing like Saul of Tarsus, he was persecuting the church, the Christian, and he thought he was doing for God. And it's sad to see those kind of situations. You're going to tell me, Mary Lou, That is impossible that I can love my enemies. I can't do that. Trust me, they speak bad on my back. 
who have have that. They betray me. They had done so many things against me. That person took my husband, that woman did this or that. That lady didn't pay me back my money. My parents abandoned me. Uh, my mom tried to abort me when I, I was in her, her womb. My dad didn't want to recognize me. Those are hard things. It hurts. There is no way I can love them. There is no way I can forgive them. They don't deserve. But the love that Jesus is calling to us to show others, it seems like impossible. Yes, it is impossible. You are right. It is impossible because we cannot love others in our own strength. In order to have that kind of love, we got to humble ourselves and recognize that Jesus died for us. And we need to depend on the Holy Spirit who has put us out in our heart. Jesus loves. God's loves in our hearts. That's the only way we can love our enemies. That's the only way that we can love each other. So the apostle wrote in Romans 5a, but God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. We were loved by Jesus while we were still sinners. We, we weren't saints. So that means that Jesus came and died for us and that cross when we didn't deserve. We were still sinners, liars, dishonest. Thief, adulterers. So we were going straight to the hell. But by his love, he paid the price for our punishment and set us free. How many of you are free this morning? Praise the Lord. Do you want to know how much Jesus loves you? How many of you want to know how much Jesus loves you? He loves you. That much. Jesus called us to love like he loves us. Philippians chapter 2, verses the 6 to 11, it says, That he was God. He did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privilege. He took the humble position of a slave. And he was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal death on the cross. Therefore, God elevated him to the place of the highest honor and gave him the name above other names. That at the time Jesus, the name of Jesus, Every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth.
and every tongue declare that Jesus is Christ, Lord, to the glory of God, the Father. Jesus left his throne of glory. He took our course of condemnation. Many times we want to love others by preference. When a person has a good reputation, it's good to be together with someone like that. When they have a very good status, when they made us feel so happy, when they always compliment on us, it's so good to feel that. When they have a good looking, when they have certain position on society, but it's not what Jesus called us to do. It's not what Jesus did. He always was surrounded for not a great people at the eyes of the Pharisee. He was surrounded for the people who nobody cares. Women for the, with the bad reputations, stealers, adulterers. You remember those? in the Bible, greedyers. Otherwise, how Jesus could get close to those people and give them the good news? If we don't get approached with those people, how are we going to pass the message to them? Jesus called us to help and love others when it's not convenient. By giving when it hurts. By loving not only with words, but with actions. He show us. And look, when you go home, you can go and search. Luke chapter 11. We find a man who went in the night, knocked his friend, his neighbor door, and ask him for food. Help me with food. I need some bread. I have some friends and family coming to my house and don't have nothing. But instead of that, he answered, Don't bother me. The door is locked for the night. And my family and I are all in bed. I can help you. Sometimes we, we do have this kind of request. Maybe not the door, but the phone. Someone calling us. In need. Oh, yeah, I will pray for you. I will pray for you, knowing that person needs you. And it's nothing wrong to pray with person because God prov provides when we pray. But we need to take action. By humbling ourselves, that Jesus loves us first. Yes, Jesus came from heaven to the earth, leaving his position and giving his life for us. So he showed us to leave our comforter and love and help others when it's not comfort, when it's not convenient. We can do this only if we depend on the Holy Spirit and humble ourselves. And you know what? 
God doesn't keep anything. He always gives you back more than you give. That's why Proverbs 19, 17, it says, If you help to the poor, you are lending to the Lord. And he will repay you. And he does. I want to share a testimony now. I don't want you thinking that same someplace else they preaching if you give one dollar, God gonna give you ten. No. I'm not preaching this. I'm not saying this for that. I'm saying this because God He does great things. About months or so ago. I was in Portland, and I heard that a lady, we were in a conversation, I heard a lady was having very bad trouble with her denture. And she was so short on money to get it fixed. And it was bothering her. She has cancer and other kind of situations. So I was touched and try to put it together something on some kind of money on my wallet. I didn't have much. But with what I have it, I just leave something for the guys to get back home. And I put it together and I give it to someone to send it to Mexico. I didn't do that because and I'm not saying because I want you to know what I did. What I, what I want to see, you to see, how God, he doesn't keep anything you do for others. He rewards you somehow, maybe different way, maybe with health, maybe with uh, happiness, maybe with uh, good uh, joys. Three days later, I came back and I went to work. And while I was doing my chief report at the end of the day, my boss come and put on the table the double I did give it to that lady. At that moment, uh, I say thank you to the lady. But uh, a week later, I was thinking about that. Because that bless came from someone I was taking care and pass in their family Give us the gift. God works in different ways. So when someone in need knock our door, not just pray. It's okay to pray. But we need to do an action. Take an action. Help others. That how he will reward us here. But in the eternity, it will be more joyful. We find when Jesus say the parable, and the king will say, I told you the truth when you did when you did it to me, I'm sorry, I'm reading after. Um, we can find in Matthew 24, 35. For I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you invited me into your home. He's saying, he will tell us when we get there. He records everything. He never will forget. The Bible say, even a single cup of water do we give to the thirsty person. God will give us back with rewards. 
He is the one invented the multiplication. And he will reward us. He will say, and the king will say, I tell you the truth. When you did it to one of the listes of this, my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. What an honor to serve to the king of kings. Recently, God has been reminding me to testify and shine wherever I go. You know, as Hispanic, we have our mentality. When we came to this country, we, I am so grateful to be here. And I am so grateful to be in this church that has embraced me and loved me, me and my family and all our Spanish people. But when we came to this country, our mentality has come to work, to work, to work, and work. And there's nothing wrong with it. I did that too. I work 18 hours a day 20 years ago. But um, probably we have the excuse. I don't have time to go and look for the people in need, to love others, or pass the message because I'm working too much. But you know what? God has given us the opportunity to breathe. And the Bible says, everything who can breathe Praise the Lord. So God has given us the opportunity to be around those 8, 12, 16, whatever hours we work, to be around with those colleague co-workers. And in that time, we can pass the message. We can testify. We can tell her how great things has done it in our lives. I believe everyone has a testimony. Who has one? Amen. Whoever has had an encounter with Jesus has a testimony. And we need to share with others. Did God have done something great in your life? Yes, he did. He saw you, he rescued you, and he saved you. And your testimony is powerful. The Samaritan, she didn't underestimate what Jesus did with her. And how much love he showed to her. The Gospel John record the woman left in a rush to the Sikar city. Or Sikar city. She didn't know much. She didn't go to the Bible school or Bible study list, or she wasn't baptized, or have a communion, or a membership, or need a tie, or memorize verses, verses from the Bible. Maybe, probably, Years after or months after, she united with the disciples and started learning. But at the moment she had the encounter with Jesus, she didn't know nothing, but only she had encountered with the Messiah. And she didn't understand, But Jesus loved her so much. She didn't reject her. He didn't reject her or mistreat her. Instead, 
he told her the truth and offered her the living water that never ends, the water for the eternity. Many of us, we cannot keep saying that I don't know enough from the Bible because the Samaritan, she didn't know much. She didn't know nothing about the Bible or the, the scripture or the Old Testament. Or She didn't know. She has some ideas that when we should adore, adore God, where we, we can worship God, she has an ideas. But she knew that she has an encounter with the Messiah. I don't know. I don't know how to speak, we say sometimes. The Holy Spirit will guide you and will speak through you, through us. Or we can say, the people won't listen to me. You know God? God will unplug the ear from the deaf people. And they will hear the gospel. We need to have, we need to have what this woman has after their encounter with Jesus. She desired that everyone who knew can get to be loved by Jesus. How excited. I, I think she ran and, and she was willing to see everyone who she knows because she wanted to share. I think her face changed. She had so much choice now when she feels free. She sh and maybe she was changed her personality, her smile, her face. And the people asked her, what happened to you? She was being transformed and it was not a fool. People notice it. You know, our face reflect how we are. Our words reflect and say what we have in, inside here. So this woman, I think she was shining. She was shining. She was excited. She was uh, uh, convinced. She was happy. She, she wanted to share. She wanted, I think she wanted to scream that everybody could hear it. People asking, what happened to you? People would start asking you, what has happened to you? I feel so, so, so good when sometimes at 6 in the morning I show up at work and my coworkers say, what happened to you? Why you are so peachy? I didn't know what that word was. <laughs> I imagine myself like a peach. <laughs> and then one day I ask, what does that mean? She said, he said, you always come happy and smiling. And it's good, you know, because Jesus loves me and God, even in the midst of the situation, he is with me. I'm not alone. You are not alone. You know, sometimes I feel like I still, I still think, and I feel like you, that I didn't deserve that Jesus saw me. Rescue me, forgive me, save me, transform me. And now he's using me as a vessel to love others. 
It's not because me. It's by the grace of God and the mercies of God for what Jesus did on the cross. For all of you who have received Jesus Christ in your heart already, but you not even remember when that happened, how that happened, how you feel that day. How was the moment? What experience did you have? Today, as the Samaritan has the encounter with Jesus in her heart, was pumping. And he was, she was rejoicing, and she went and shared to others, Jesus is here at the well today, and he is giving the living water still now. You can have an encounter with him, and he will love you and restore you. For those who haven't had Jesus on your life, Today, he is knocking, knocking at the door of your heart. Open your life. He loves you. He want to fulfill you with the living water that never ends. Is anyone here today who want to take advantage of the gifts of salvation, I want to see your hands up. I want to pray for you. Or anyone online who needs to be loved and decide to let Jesus in your heart and your life, let me pray for you. Anyone here? Anyone who don't remember when you received Jesus Christ and you forgot that moment, you forgot that, that excitement, that experience that make you cry, that make you feel different. You can come together with Jesus. He is in the world right now. And he want to fill you with the living water, and you can start a new life today. I want to pray for you. Please repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are of the Son of God. I believe that I am a sinner. You love me and died for me in my, my sin and the cross. Bury it in the grave. Rise at the third day and went to the heaven. And now you are sitting at the right of side of the Father. I receive you in my life. I repent for my sins. I am so sorry for the all things are done. Please forgive me. I want to have a new life to love you and love others. For those who are recommitting with God, Heavenly Father, please forgive me for all my trespassing today. I want to start a new life with you. I want to love you and love others. You love the Samaritan in me. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. I want you to, if you did the decision to come here with Sister Diane, she's going to be there. We want to know that you want to walk with God. And we want to help you to walk and do the next step. So please visit at the center, uh, Welcome Center. She will help you. And for those who has a need, don't hesitate. The brothers and sisters team will be here praying for you. I want you to stand up and open your hands.
May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. You are dismissed. Blessings. Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in to today's teaching at Pursuit Church. We pray that the teaching today will encourage your faith in Jesus Christ to draw you closer to Him and give you a better understanding of His Word. If there's a way that we can minister to you, pray for you, or encourage you in your faith, please reach out to us on our website, PursuitNazarene.org, and click on Connection Card. Also, you can share this video with others and encourage them. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.